Hello everyone, welcome back to the part 2 of how to improve your middle game. This is the second part of the how to improve your middle game. I have already uploaded the first part. So if you haven't checked out that particular video, so make sure to go and check out that video first. So in today's video, we are going to reply to the second question by asking the question, what is the problem in our position? For example, if I'm playing with the white pieces, what are the problems I'm facing? So basically, I'm going to find out that particular weakness and particular problems and I'm going to work upon them, try to eliminate the, those problems. So I don't want to waste any further time, so let's quickly jump into the video. We are again going to discuss five critical diagrams. So we are playing with the white pieces and we have this particular position on the board. So we are playing with the white pieces. You guys can try to pause the video and try to find what are the weaknesses white is having in this particular position and we are the one playing with the white pieces. Okay, so if you found those weaknesses that our c4 pawns, so if our f4 pawn, f2 pawn and h2 pawn are weak, you are extremely right because these are the isolated pawns and are the weak squares. Black just needs some time to play the move rook h8 followed by rook h4 putting pressure over here and just doubling upon the h5 trying to capture the h2 pawn. So as we know that these this, uh, these are the problems white is facing, we are facing. So how are we really going to remove them? Can I just trade off this pawn with this pawn? Yes, I can. I can simply play the move h4. And my idea is to simply play the move h5. For example, after rook h8, which is the best move, I'm going to simply play the move h5. Pawn takes knight takes. And now you can see how I successfully removed the h2 weaknesses by just trading it off with a good pawn. And after knight into h5, the bishop is attacked. So the bishop have to move. And now what is my next problem? My next problem is the pawn on f4 because it is a double pawn as well as it's an isolated pawn. So I can simply push the pawn to f5, again removing the weaknesses. And my idea is to simply capture the pawn. And if at the moment I capture the pawn, for example, if bishop to b7, I'm happy to trade off the pawn. And now you will realize, okay, I'm having a weak pawn on f2. At the same time, black is also having a weak pawn on e6. So the position is roundabout even. So this is how you can just remove your weakness. Try to find your problems and try to remove those problems. So this was the diagram number one. So now let's move on to the diagram number two. So coming on to the diagram number two, here we are. You can again try to pause the video and try to find the problems white is facing and how to solve them. Okay, so first if I like uh, take a look at the king because it is a topmost priority, we can say that yeah, Black king looks a bit weak, but it's not that much weak because the queen is already pr uh, protecting it. And like there is already pawn on g7 as well as an h4. The king is a bit more safe compared to the white king we are having. There is no g pawn. And the queen is already on the king side. So yeah, definitely if you give some time to black, black would be happy to play the move rook f6 followed by rook g6, threatening some mating ideas. So how should we reply to it? As we know that the king is our main issue, so we are going to protect it by playing the move bishop to e6. Absolutely right. We simply hit the rook. And the moment rook moves, we simply play the move bishop g4. And now bishop acts as a pawn protecting the king. And after the queen move, for example, to g6, now we are having even strong move, which is king h1. And now our idea is to bring the another rook to g1, trying to play on the king side, taking advantage of black weak king. So this is how you should play. You find out that your king is weak, so you try to put your pieces on the king side. And all those who think that uh, queen g6 wins a piece for black, it's not really working because again, I can protect this by bringing the bishop between. So this was the second diagram. So now let's move on to the third diagram. So we have the third diagram on the board. We are playing with the black pieces. And again, you can just pause the video and try to find the answer for black. Okay, so all those who have came up with the move, first of all, the weakness, which is the e6 pawn. Yep, black, white just wants to play the move f4. For example, if we play the move like something like c6, white would be happy to push the pawn to f4 and now we can never push this pawn again and this pawn is going to be a lifetime weakness. So what we are going to do? We want to push this pawn, but we can't really do it but now because white will happily capture this pawn. But we are having something even better, which is knight to g6. Simply hitting the queen, 
and also covering the e5 square. You cannot play the move knight c6 because again white would be playing the move f4. That is the reason knight g6 is the best and the moment queen move, we are going to play the move e5. Pawn takes, knight takes, knight takes and now you can take with the any of the material queen or the rook and the possession is around about even. I would even prefer black slightly. So yeah, this is how you do it. Just find out your weakness. The, the weakness is your pawn on e6. So you just try to remove it. So this was the diagram number three. So now let's move on to the diagram number four. So we have the diagram number four on our board. You can pause the video, try to find the weakness of black and how would you respond to it. Okay, so if you found out that the rooks are extremely strong in this open c5 and white is preparing to play the move rook c7 which is going to be extremely dangerous for black. We, 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 we must try to stop this rook penetration. So how can we do it? We must play the move knight to e5, heading the queen. Queen moves and now we simply play the move knight to c6. And now knight on c6 simply acts as a defender, a blocking piece. And now the rook can no longer penetrate into our camp. So our idea is to simply play the move rook c8, rook c7, just doubling up on the rook uh, on the c file. And finally, we are going to simply move the knight. And the position is round about even. So this is how you must do it. Find out the weakness that white wants to play the move rook c7. The c file is our weakness. So what we do, we try to take control of the c file by just putting a defender in between. So this was the fourth diagram. So now let's move on to the fifth and the final diagram of the day. So we have the fifth diagram on the board and this is the di last diagram. So it's a uh, black just played the move D5. After D5, you can just pause the video and try to find the weakness of white and what a white must do. Okay, so after D5, black's idea is already to capture on e4. For example, if h3, black would love to take on e4 followed by bishop into e4 and we would be simply a pawn down. That's not how we do it. So instead after d5, as we know that the bishop loves pawn position. So we, what we do, we play the move e5. Hitting the bishop, bishop goes back and now we play the move c5. Trying to lock up the position because our Black wants to open up the position, we are trying to close the position because as I said, knight is, knights are always superior in block position. So after c5, if black gives white one more move, we would love to play the move d4. And you can see how this bishop is simply cornered by a pawn and the bishop is having no space to get out of b7. So black, black tries to play the move d4, but now we can simply play move c6. Hitting the bishop, bishop move, and now simply queen f4. The d4 can't be defended and we are going to win the pawn and eventually the game. This is how you should do it. Just find out the weakness. Again, black wants to open up the position. That's our weakness. We try to block the weakness by taking that weakness and trying to remove that weakness. So what we do, we simply close the position because the bishops are extremely bad in their close position. So yeah. This was the fifth diagram. I hope that after watching the fifth, all the five diagrams and solving these five diagrams with me, your improvement have already begun and you're already better than before. So I, if this video helped you to improve your game, increase your knowledge, then make sure to like the video, share this video with everyone and make sure to subscribe to our channel if you are new to our channel. We are going to come up with these exciting videos like this. We are going to come up with part three, some uh, make sure to click the notification bell if you want to get always notified whenever I would be posting new videos. So I'm going to see you soon. So till then stay tuned and keep watching one shot chess.